has been a short round. It's been over two weekends. You had Vegas. Baxter, you've waited. You've been patient. We've recorded episode after episode, but we finally made it to the time where you get to talk about your boys. But I'm not going to let you talk about them right away because obviously they are playing the Dolphins at 4.05. It is at Suncorp Stadium on Sunday, the 10th of March. But I will obviously go first. As they are the home team, I will talk about the Dolphins. And I'll let you talk about your boys when we get to that position. So you've got the Hammer. He's at fullback with the winners of Osako and Jack Bostock. You've got Tessie Newman, Herbie Farmworth in the centres. You've got the half pairing of Cody Nikarima and your Nathan Cleary 2.0. Sean O'Sullivan gets the halfback position. You've got the captain, Jesse Bromwich, with Thomas Flegler in the props position. Welcome to the club, Mr. Flegler. You've got Jeremy Marshall King in the hooker position with the second row of Felice Kafusi and Connolly Lemu Lemu. And obviously, Ray Stone will finish the scrum in the number 13 and lock position. On the interchange, you've got Josh Kerr, Max Plath, Kenneth Bromwich, and Mark Nichols, the GOAT, with an extended bench of Jared Wallace, Jake Avarillo, Oren Keeley, Ewan Aitken, and Isaiah Katoa. A, a decent squad on paper. Now, obviously, some people might be sitting here and they might say, I'll throw it to Baxter. He'll have a little bit of bias. He'll say the team's trash because of who they are playing against. But Baxter, I will throw it to you. Obviously, it is your team. So you a chance to talk about them shortly. But talk to me about this Dolphins side, I guess. One through 17, is there a position where you're – I guess concern could change the game in the favour of the Dolphins. Obviously, their coach is Wayne Bennett. He could be another underlying factor. But what are your thoughts with this one? Yeah, look, look, they're not that they're not that rubbish. Um, they are a Queensland side, so they don't. It's not all hope, uh, doom and gloom for them here. Um, the Hammer looks impressive. Uh, uh, Jermaine Asako, Herbie Farmworth coming off that. Uh, Incredible run with the Broncos last year, just to fall short at the, at the grand final. Um, Nathan Cleary 2.0, hopefully he stays injury-free and he can get out in the park and he can lead this team around in uh, Wayne Bennett's last year as a head coach at this current time before he signs on with a new deal somewhere else. Um, yeah, let, let, let's just hope that they, um, for some odd reason, they have a big team meeting and a big team lunch uh, or dinner the night before. Um, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but maybe you know there's a bit of food poisoning, and uh, they just can't complete. The, they can't come out to the, the pitch, and uh, we just go to basically get the win. Um, well, but ladies yeah, look, and gentlemen, before before I let him go any further, if by whatever chance there is food poisoning and you see this man on a plane up to Suncorp. It has nothing to do with the Gone for 10 show. He's acting on his own accord. I'm not saying he's guilty, but I'm just going to chuck it out there. We did not <laughs> entice any food poisoning unless you're playing against the Roosters, and I hope most teams do get food poisoning. But Baxter, keep moving on. When you're ready, you can jump over to your squad. Oh, yeah, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. The man The man that can just drink a lot of water, Scotty Drinkwater, Kyle Felt, Valentine Holmes, Zach Labor comes in. For the, oh, I, I can I can't even remember who was playing there before. Um, Mario Talange, Tom Tom Dearden, our new captain. Yes, one of two. Yes, if you heard in a previous podcast, I don't like double captains, but it is what it is. Chad Townsend, the man, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, Jordan McLean, Reese Robson, Jason Tamalolo moves to prop. Uh, Jordan, uh, him, Helen Lukey, Jeremiah Nani, Ruben Cotter, Jake Greenville. Griffith Namey, Sam McIntyre, and KF, the man with the longest last name ever, Tom Chester, Thomas McKeel, Sam Varry, Jack Kongorski, and Jay Clifford, the man to return back to the uh, North Queensland Cowboys after he spent down at Newcastle where it was unsuccessful and over in the Super League where he did somewhat impressive things over there. But nonetheless, uh, this is a... This, this is my team. Um, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot happening here. Um, you got Chad Townsend on his last uh, uh, big, big contract. Do we move him at the end of the year? Um, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something big. I'm gonna say something bold. And I want to be. I want to. I want to be. I want to. If if it comes to be to fruition or something along these lines, I want to sort of 
put my name to this that I've caught it. Um, no, I don't know. It's nothing to do with the Premiership. I think that some of these big, uh, some of these players that are on big money contract will get moved on to the end of the year. All right, talk to me. No, I, I think I think a maybe a Jason Tamalolo will be looked at to be moved on at the end of the year. Um, he still got what I think three more years, maybe four or more years left on that big uh, ten million dollar contract, a million a season. I know he we paid him um, top heavy at the front of his contract, so I think he's around the eight fifty at the moment, maybe the nine hundred mark. Um, no, he's back. He's 950 for the next four seasons. 950 for the next four seasons. So imagine if we could just get rid of that for the next four seasons and we could sort of use that money to bring in maybe a new centre. Maybe Joe, uh, just Joey Mano wants to come up into the heat and he wants to play with the Cowboys. Maybe, hey, uh, here's what it is. We could look at somewhere else and we could get another centre. Maybe we could get a um, a former um, state of origin player who's sort of retired, but then will come back out of retirement to play state of origin when New South Wales call upon him. Uh, maybe, maybe so, but he's too old at the moment. Um, right, we could we could steal someone from Manly. We could steal someone from anywhere with that kind of amount of money, um, like the Raiders do at this current time. Yeah, I just got a little um, report on uh, my training session tonight on the captain's run. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to call it here. I'm gonna, I I believe that a lot of these big players um, will move on at the end of the year. Like you got Jordan McLean, the man that's got no no legs anymore. He will be moved on. Jason Damalolo, you know. He's what twenty? Or he's thirty. Sorry, like he's thirty, and he's got four more years left. So, by the end of it, has that ten-year contract really worked out? At the current time, I'll say no. It has not worked out. Yes, at the time, it was a great thing to do because we locked him up. Um, he was this player that was on hot success, um, so to speak, but. Since then, he's just not been the best moving forward. And, you know, I think we may move him on at the end of the year um, whilst I get the team list back up and I have a look at it. You know, Jake Granville is another one that I think will get let go at the end of the year. Um, and more of these youngsters like your Griffith Namey, your Sam McIntyre, um, your heel and Lukey will get a little bit of top up here and there. Um, and maybe we get a, um, a new seven moving forward. Um, I, I don't see we, we us re-signing Chad, um, given that he is now 33 years of, uh, of age um, currently. Uh, he's had his birthday six days before mine, so um, another January kid there. So I don't see, like, I think this year, um, as much as I would love to um, pepper him and put a little bit of um, mayo on this um, this season, I, I don't see him in playing finals football. If we do, I'll be happy and um, I'll say it's luck, um, but I don't see us playing finals football this this year and maybe um, in the maybe next year as well, depending on who we uh, we sign. Um, as well so that's just my kind of thing. i'm going to just rubber stamp that and just put this down to a um a rebuild well not a rebuild but a rebuild is in a sense that yeah it's one of those years that we just had to absorb this year and we'll just look forward to the future i mean i, I i'm not going to disagree with you with the fact that you might not play finals football I'm going to disagree with the rebuild year. We have a back line of Scotty Drinkwater, Kyle Felt, Valentine Holmes, Murray. Well, there's another, there's a, sorry, there's another one, Kyle Felt. I reckon we get rid of him being at 32 now. Well, I, I think, think, I think just... you get rid of Felt, but you, you, you can't say it's a rebuild year when you've got that. You've got someone that can score tries. You've got Holmes, who is unbelievable. You've got Scott Drinkwater, who's been unbelievable. You've got Tuolagi, who's been good for you guys. You've got Dearden, who had a great season. Townsend, who had a great season. 
you then move on and yes he hasn't played oh, I, best, I, I think so i think it's going to be a rebuild to you behind the scenes like we're going to move on well in my opinion we're going to move on one two three four uh, five five of our starting 17 that take up a bit of a bit of money well, um, I mean, you, ch- you accounts, chat on and I'll, I'll just have a look at um well, from all accounts, one of those, you, like you said, you think Tamalalo might be moved on. However, don't forget your coach did come out less than a month ago and said he will not be forced out of the club. He will see his contract out if he wants to. Again, a contract means nothing, but I could see it being a situation where he might leave the club, but you still might be absorbing, I don't know, three, four $400,000 in the next couple of years to get him off the books. But you'll be able to upgrade a few contracts in the meantime until that runs out. So it is, I guess, an exciting time, but also a hard time if you are a Cowboys fan. Exciting that there is that possibility that you will move forward, you will get rid of players, you will bring in an X factor, but it does go to show you that there are players that at the time, like you said, great, you gave him a 10-year contract, but was he worth that much? Back then, yes. Towards the back end of the season, no, but... I know you're doing a little bit of research over there. Um, obviously, yeah. like I said, Tamalalo, 950000 Have you found anyone else while you've been doing that? Yeah, look, um, whilst I quickly skim over the, the current squad, if my computer stops messing up, um, it keeps doing it. Like, at the moment, you got uh, you got Ch- uh, Chatty on 700 So there's some... Um, some money relief. This is his last season here. Um, you got uh, Jordan McLean hasn't got it listed, but he's. This is his last year. Sam McIntyre, he's on his last year, which you know could be a good pickup. You know, Colin Hess is in his last year at five five fifty, going on an a, a ACL um, repair. I don't know if we re-sign him. This is Kyle Phelps last year at the moment. Jake Granville um, last year. You know. He he's one right. <clears throat> there is a player that is worth or is currently at the moment on four hundred thousand dollars. Without looking, Tony, can you quickly name them? They have played for Australia and they have played for Queensland State of Origin. There's only a few people that come to mind because I know obviously and, and and just without and without naming them. Um, do you think that that player it should be on four hundred thousand? Well, I was actually that. there. There was, there was one player I was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you what he's on because I was going to say the money that you are going to save off these players is going to be players that um, need an upgraded contract. And I had heard that this player was not on a big contract. I don't know if it is him, but I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to say Ruben Cotter is only on about yeah. four hundred, four hundred fifty thousand. He's on 400 for the ne- this season and next, and then after that, it's um, yeah, it's a lo- it's looking a bit skim. But as I said, you know, Jay Clifford, he's on this year alone. Um, Kyle Phelps on this lo- year alone. Jake Gramble, Colin Hess. Um, maybe we don't re-sign him with the- given that he's gotten all these injuries. You know, Sam McIntyre, Jordan McLean. You know, Jeremiah Nana, we just upgraded to 900,000 playing for Australia and State of Origin. And unfortunately, that is what it is. You know, Reese Robson's only got this year and next. Um, Marit has got four more years, uh, three more years. So, but, you know, if if uh, if Jason wants to stay and earn his, free, uh, his 950 for the next four seasons, then um, so be it. We just have to... Uh, we sort of have to um, accept the consequences moving forward for what we did in the past, but you know, um, there's other there's other uh, things that we might need to look at. You know, do, like do you resign Chatty for another year on the cheap um, until another Haas? Sort of. Uh, do you think? He, do you think he, you say on the cheap? Do you think he takes less than seven hundred k to stay for another year? Do you think there's demand yeah. for him to go somewhere? No, I don't think I don't think there is. Like I don't think let's just say that, you know, he, he goes looking elsewhere. I don't think he can he can demand seven hundred anywhere else. Now, he's a, he's a million dollar player if you send him across to the Super League. 
Yeah, but that's Super League. That's a bit different. That's that's England. And they're the world football. champions, mate. They're the world back to back world champions over there. Yeah, yeah, but that's if they need a, uh, a seven. But but in the NRL, there's not a he's not really worth the seven hundred thousand that we signed for him. I think it was more of a a panic buy sort of thing. Like we paid overs just to make sure we got that um, we got that signature, um, which we really needed. Uh, being that him being a premiership half and an, ex- and an experienced half too, both playing at the Cronulla Sharks and the Warriors. Um, but I don't see there, like, I don't see a seven out there on the market that could um, come to the Cowboys. Um, I know if I quickly look el- elsewhere. Nah, I'll, look, I'd love to have. He wants um, to go to Queensland. There's no spots in Brisbane. Well, if we if we just pick, if we if we wanted Ben Hunt, well, we we gotta just stick with Chad Townsend. He, at least he's a, you know he's a bit cheaper. Um, oh, a bit, sorry, not cheaper. He's a bit younger, but um, you know, there's a player you know who's got two more years left. He's playing you know at a Sydney club that was dropped for uh, a mystery reason middle way through the season last year, um, has a famous last name, comes from uh, two uncles with, that just could coach any team off the park in the NRL. You know, maybe we get him, you know, we, we partner him up with um, Tom Dearden and that could be the future six and seven moving forward for Queensland as well. Um, what, a, what a partnership, but a man can dream, a man can dream. Well, well, you know what? I'm not going to say who you're talking about. I want to see if anyone can pick that up and let us know in the comments. Um, but, I mean, it would be a good partnership. Um, it could be the future, like you said, six and seven for State of Origin with Baxter. You've spoken about the Cowboys quite quickly. I'll throw it to myself first. I am going to go with the Cowboys in a 1-12 to win. But I will throw it to you before you give me your prediction on this game. You've spoken about Cowboys potentially missing the top eight. Where do you think the Dolphins end up in their second season? And then give me the prediction for the game. I think they um they finish higher on the ladder um, the last season, but I don't see them playing finals football uh, again. Um, this is the t- this is one of um, maybe a few uh, teams that can pounce and jump into the eight, um, given that they have a good uh, run of form, but. Uh, I'm sticking. Uh, I'm just going to call it now and say that they missed the eight by like two to four points, and um, unfortunately come up short. And your result for the game? How are you going with this one? Oh look, oh, look. I know. Uh, I love. I love a, like um, a draw here. Um, that would be interesting. Um, but I know we can't do that, so I'll put it, I'm going to back my boys. You, you can go that. You're probably throwing away a, a few points, but you can go that if you want. Ah, look, I'll go against. My, I'll go with my boys, and I'll go on one to twelve. I told you, not a lot of thirteen pluses this week. Oh, it sounds good, back. So obviously, we have got to the end of round one. Um, massive shout out to the Tigers. You got your two points. You're at worst sitting in ninth position. You've got back that ninth position that you love so so much, and. Hey, look at that. You make a few signings. You move yourself up the ladder. By the time this game finishes, you will be sitting in ninth unless there is a draw and then you will move into the top eight. So maybe Baxter is trying to be a little bit of a Tigers fan here. But Baxter, we've made it to the end of the episode. It has been, I guess, an interesting round. We had round zero, round one, whatever you want to call it. Um, we have a few, obviously, like you said, the one incident that did come out of Las Vegas, that's all up in the air now that's been not dealt with, but there is a verdict of what's happening, but it has been an interesting round. Footy season is back and that's what we live for. That's what we're here for. We have been the Gone for 10 show. This is the round one tips, previews, predictions, anything you want to know, drop it in the comments and Baxter until round two. See you later. See you then.